right above the middle point, Chav Beis Amid Beis Treis Chav Gimel. on 22b, two dots, less two dots on the page. Okay. 22b, b. So where is, which b what? Okay. Tonerabonon, habo ala chuso, one who has relations with his sister. Vibas eshes oviv, and she's the daughter of the wife of his father. Me meaning, a man is married to a woman, he has two children. He has a son, he has a daughter. So firstly, it's a sister, and at this means sister, it's the daughter of the wife of his father. Right, because she was born within the context of marriage. Let's say a man would... Uh, live out of wedlock with a woman. So they're related, but the woman who gave birth to his sister is not his, is, is not his wife, is not the wife of his father. Correct? Because the Torah refers to the sister as the daughter of the wife of the father. So now the question is, when a person c commits in incest, even inadvertently, right? If a person does, he, you have a liability of a chatos. You have to bring a sin offering. So if it's two lavim, so you have to bring two chatos. But if it's only one love, it's only one negative commandment, you only have to bring one, one chatos, one sin offering. So that's the... In, in halacha, there's no difference. Sister is a sister. Half sister, whole sister, it's all the same. Okay? The wife, the daughter of the wife of the father, is not going to be the other Still a sister. Okay? Turn around. Habo ala choso, he first has relations with his sister, and she was also bas eshes oviv. She's the daughter of his father's wife. It's, it's his father's daughter, but she was born from the wife of the father. It means she was born mm -hmm. within the context of marriage. Chav Yishum Achosim Shum Eishes Oviv. So he's in violation of two lavim. He's in violation of Achosim, it's a sister. So he has to bring a chatos for sister. And also for what? For Eishes Oviv, the daughter of the wife of his father. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Huda, Omer, Enu Chayv Elim Shum Achosu Blavod. He only brings one chatos. We'll see in more. Aye, the Torah says Mefurish explicitly, the daughter of the wife of the father, right? Velobni Basei Shusoviv. My time, I use Rabbanon. Why did the Chacham say that there's a double chatos, right? The Chacham say I bring two chatos. Amri Michli Ksiv. What does it say in the Torah? Ervas Achoscha. This is when he has relations with his sister. It says, achoscha, bas ovicha o basimecho. Right? The daughter of your father or, or the daughter of your mother. Either one. Then it says, Ervas bas eshes ovicha. The, right, the erva of the daughter of this wife of your father. Moletis ovicha, she's the seed of your father. Achoscha, it's your sister. So the Torah refers to, first it says, a person has relations w with his sister, who's either the, the daughter of his father or mother. Then it says, Ervas be bas eshes ovicho, the seed of your father, it's your sister. So we see her referred to as two things, as your sister and the daughter of the wife of your father. Lomali. So what does it have to repeat it again? Evidently, Shmamiro lechayv mishum achoso. Umishum bas eshes oviv. It tells that you're in violation of two, two, two lavim. It's your sister, so you have to bring a chatos for inadvertently having a relation with your sister. And also, the same person, because it was within the context of marriage, it's the daughter of the wife of your father. Okay? No. Questions: How many, how many you saw him? They weren't married. Then it's just your sister. It's not the daughter of the wife of your father, right? So Rashi says, "Michti Ksiv." It says, "I'm just reading Rashi." Michti Ksiv Ervas Achos Chobasavicho Bein Mene Onsin Bein Mene Nesuin Mashma. When it says this, the erva of your sister, that includes both whether it was as a result of ones rape. Or with the marriage. 
because factually she's, she's the daughter of your father, right? Er mashma. It's bas ishes of vicho, moledes of vicho nomli. It comes out the second, is, is totally superfluous. So evidently it comes to tell me that you're in violation of two lavi. Firstly, it's your sister. Sister could be either marriage or not marriage. And then the Torah says specifically marriage. So that's an addition. Right? Then it says when it speaks about achos rehi, that's in the posseg of what? Bas eishes of vicho. It says ervas bas eishes of vicho achos rehi. She's the daughter of the wife of your father. She is your sister. It says achos rehi. Okay? Good. So that's the position of the Chachomim. Shmami no, so the Chachomim say, from here we draw, L'chaivo mishum achoso, u mishum ach bas eishis oviv. So how does Rabbi Yossi argue? Rabbi Yossi Behuda says that what? You're only, only one chatos. Rabbi Yossi Behuda, Omar, Omar kru achos rehi mishum achoso, atom l'chaivo. It says, it says, achos rehi. What does it end? It says, the daughter of the wife of your father, achos rehi. She is the same as the first. What does that mean? Even when she's the born within wedlock, she's also only your sister. There's no separate prohibition because she's married. That's what Torah is saying. Not like, not like the Chachomim. It says, if you have relations with your sister, it's the daughter of your father or your mother. It says, the daughter, the erva of the wife of your father, it's the same as the sister out of the context of marriage. And you say, how many, how many levels of liability a person have? One. So the person is only liable for one chatos. Somebody asks a question. According to Chum, the word achoscha, he seems to be superfluous. The Chum say you're liable for one, not two. Right? So if you're liable for one, not two, so what is the achoscha coming to teach me? The Chum say Yichai for two. For two. For two. So what's Achos? Achos seems it's the same as the first. Miboy lechai bal Achoso bas oviv bas imo. You hear this? I would think the first post says if you have relations with the daughter of your father or the daughter of your mother. How do we know if the daughter of both? <coughs> Maybe daughter of both. It's a different reality of error that the Torah doesn't discuss. So the Torah ter tells me no that if the daughter of both, that's also your sister. It's the same liability, but it's one and the same. Yeah? L'chaiva l'achosa bas oviv, basim odoma she'in basir metin. You see, seemingly it's a kalvachomer. We have a concept of If the Torah says you're liable if you have relations with your sister who's just a half-sister, either through the father or the mother, so if it's a full sister for both parents, it's definite. When it comes to lavim, we say e'in basir metin. We don't apply the principle of kalvachomer. The Torah has to say it explicitly. So where does Torah say explicitly? It says, the daughter of the father, the wife of your father, means that, that means the sister, which is from both parents, achoschi, that is also your sister. Okay? So therefore it's not superfluous. Because ein masir min adin, we don't apply the principle of Kavuchomer to establish the, the, the erva. Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yehuda, imkei lichtov kra, achoscho, he, achoscho. It should say achoscho. What, what, what about the he? The two words, which is superfluous, it's achoscho, it's your sister. So if you want to tell me that a sister both parents is also a sister, it should say achoscho. What's he? It is. It is the inference of it is. It is the same as the first, meaning that's only one love. Right? So the he is, is superfluous. So Mar says, Rabbi Yosef Yudh says, What do we need the he? You know what the East come to me? Tell me that you're only one love. Only one chatos. That's the he. Rabbonon. So what did Rabbonon do with the he? The he even if you tell me, Ein Masir Minadin. To say you don't apply the principle of Kalvachomer, where she's related for both, you should say Achoscha. What do you have to write the word he? He means she is. It's your sister. Even though it says it's not sufficient. You still need the word he. You would think maybe under normal circumstances, I do apply the Kalvachomer. You do use the Kalvachomer prince to learn out Isurim. Right? So if that's the case, if the he tells me 
a masir min adin. So what do I need a chosro? The kosher rachman lomli mils nas from kal v'chomer toruch v'kosher lakro. Even though you can learn it from a kal v'chomer, you know something. Sometimes Torah, even though something you know logically, the Torah says explicitly. So therefore, the Torah says, "See, no, a chosro you may think mils nas from kal v'chomer something you learn from a kal v'chomer." Torah goes out of its way to write it explicitly. He is very specific. It is. It is means to tell me ain't masir min adin. Under no circumstance do I plead a kal v'chomer. Right? Because Rachmihi, tell me no, that it's Eimasir min adin. Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yudim, Kein, Lichter, Rachmona, Lachosho, He. It should say, Lachosho. Bidich Kro, it should say, Achosho, He, in the first posuk. Gabbai Chosho, Basavich, Lohuske, Shom, Ishus, Nafke, Otsim, Minei, Dibsun, Ashmin, Ab, Bas, Ovi, Bas, Imo, now he's asking a good question. So what, if we're telling me, all it tells me to tell me that a double sis, a sister, full sister is the same as a sister, which is a half sister. So if that's the case, what does it has to refer to as Ashes of Vicho? If we're saying whether she's married from a marriage or not a marriage, it's only one love. So why does there have to say it's the daughter of the wife of your father? Let us say a sister is either the daughter of your father or your mother, or both father and mother. What does that have to refer to as Ashes, the wife of? Right? Yeah. What about if you have a sister? It's only a sister where the mother is marriageable, has relevance to marriage. What about if the father had relations with a shiksa? Can't marry. The, the law of marriage doesn't apply to a non-Jewish woman. And then he had relations with that seed that was born from the non-Jewish woman. Right? Is, is it an erva? It's not, it's not called your sister. That's what Torah says. It's only Ashes of Vicha. It's a woman where your father has relevance to marrying her. Right? Because we'll see them. So, right? So what about if she's a Ovedus Kochovim? She's a Goy? Or she's a Shivcha? Or she's a Canaanite slave. You can't marry a Canaanite slave. Nobody can marry a Canaanite slave. That's not called your sister. That's what it says. Prat la chosim yishivcha v'obedes kochovim chen ishes lo vicha. Bo. Right? A man cannot marry a Canaanite slave, and now can mar cannot marry a shiksa. Prat of this is not your sister. That's that's it's cause it's not a, uh, because maybe you'll say it's your sister even if it's a product of a goy. Said so, no, that's why Rabbi Yosef says what says Aishas Ovicho. It's only a woman has relevance to marriage. Mm -hmm. So which woman has relevance? She has to be Jewish. If she's a Shiksa or she's a Shivcha Kananis, Kananis, she has no relevance to marriage. Okay? So although biologically it's your father's seed, it's his issue, it's not your sister. So Mor says, Vayma Prad la Chosme Anuso. Maybe, how does Rabbi Yosef very you to know that it's coming to exclude the Shiksa? And the, uh, maybe it's come to say, maybe it means truly only if it's within the context of marriage. But if, let's say, it's a, si a sister of a rape, of a rape, maybe not. Maybe there's no liability of Achoso. That's the Moritz Eskim Rabbi Yosef Yehuda. The aim of Prat Lachos Me'anuso Lo Motzis Amrit. That you can't say. Why? Midrovo. Because that have another person. It tells me that definitely a sister who comes even as a result of a rape, that's your sister. Why? Because I have two psukim. Rami, Rabbi has a question. Ksiv erves bas bincho, o bas bincho lo segale. Says the erva of the daughter of your, your, your grandson, your, gra your son's daughter, your granddaughter who's the granddaughter as a result of the child of your son, or the ta child of your daughter. You should not. So what's ha bas bino dido? It says bas bincho. What about if it's the daughter of your wife? The granddaughter of you have Ubas Bito Didoshori. It's the inference is she's permitted. I but it says Uksiv. Ervas Ishu Bitlo Segale. But that's a, a mother and, a, and that's a daughter. As Bas Bito, Bas Bito. So how do we reconcile both Psukim? Ha Ketzat, Kam Baunsen, Kam So I already know from that Pasuk that a daughter or a granddaughter comes as a result of a rape. It's no different than from a marriage. So, so what does it say? Eshe Sovicha. It comes to exclude. The shiksa and the shivcha kananis. So Mar asks a question. Vema prat lechavi lavim. 
Yeah. Maybe it's coming. How do we know it's coming to exclude the shiksa? Maybe it's coming to exclude. Let's see, she's a mamzeris. Let's see, your father has relations with a mamzeris, which is a chavi lav, it's a Torah violation. Right? And the daughter, Omar Apopo, chavi lav, and tashba kedushin, because that's called ashes. Right? If a man marries a mamzeris, although he's not permitted, the marriage takes effect. Right? So that's called ashes. So the chsiv, how do we know? How do we know that the, uh, a mamzeris is called a wife? How do, maybe a wife, maybe it's not called a wife. The chsiv, it says, kisiyah, and kisiyah, it says, kisiyah li'ish te noshin. A man has two wives. It says, achas ahuvo, v'achas nur. One is beloved, one is despised. V'chiyish ahuvo l'fnei amokom, v'yish nur l'fnei amokom. We're talking about in God's eyes. One wife is beloved to God, one is despised by God. Why is she despised by God? El ahuvo ahu bin usuev, meaning one is a permitted marriage. And snuah snubin said, the reason why God doesn't, Smile on this marriage because it's not a permitted marriage. What's not a permitted marriage? She's a mamzeris. But we see a mamzeris is called a marriage. Vomer achmona ki sieno. It says, but they're your wives. So from that passage, I already know that a love is called a wife. So I don't need Aishas or Vicho. I don't need Aishas or Vicho to tell me it's his sister. I already know from here that it's recognized as a marriage from this other passage. So therefore, so Maris, now, this is a phenomenal question. We say it's called Eshe Zavicha, somebody who your father could marry. What about if he has a if he commits incest with his sister and he has a child? It's his, it's, it's, it's your sister. Let's say a man has a, a child from a permitted marriage, then he commits incest with his sister. A man a, a man cannot marry a sister, right. correct? Right. But yet, so now let's say the kosher child now has relations with his sister. It's a sister. So may, that's the question. Maybe it's come to say. That it's your sister, even if it's some chayvik krisus, even some chayvik krisus, because there there's no marriage. Vayma prat lechayvik. No, he's not permitted to marry. He's not permitted. First, it's his sister. It's his sister. He's not permitted to marry her. No, a man has relations with his sister. Can't marry his sister. And now he has a sister. Now he has a child from his sister. He had a child, the father, the father. The father has a son from a, a regular wife. Now he has commits his incest with his sister, with his own sister. Now, so the two children are, uh, are siblings, right? So now, how do we know that if this kosher child has relations with this mamzeris, with this illegitimate, how do we know it's considered he's having relations with his sister? His father cannot marry that woman. Because we're saying now, it's only your, it's only your sister if, it's, if the woman's marriageable. This woman's not marriageable to him because it was, he had relations with his sister, right? Then prad lechai bikrisus. Omar Kroos, the Rava says, Omar Rava Omar Kroos, Ervas achoscho basavich basimecho. The sister, who's the sister of your father or the daughter of your mother, moledes bais and moledes chutz. Yeah? Whether it's a permitted marriage, moledes bais, bein shomrim lo lavicho kayim, whether it's from a woman who the Torah allows you to keep that woman, or even the Torah says you're not permitted to be with her. It's your sister. I, but so what's Ashes? Says if that's the case, maybe it comes even to include a sister, even from a shiksa. If we're saying that even if the marriage doesn't take effect, it's called your sister, so how do we know to exclude the shiksa from, the, maybe that's also your sister or the shiksa gananis? Omakro bas eishas o vicho. Mi sheish lo eishas lo vicho baprat lachos v'shifcho v'odis kochovim. It's more says my royce. Why do you exclude one more than the other? Either one marriage is not, doesn't take effect. Stav chai v'ekrisus havalei l'rabos. Why do we say chai v'ekrisus isn't your sister? Shkini tafshubok. Let's say another Jew would want to marry her. Right? A man has relations with his sister. The woman, of course, he cannot marry her, but, let, but she's still subject to marriage if another Jew would want to marry her. But if she's a shiksa or shifcha kananis, no Jew could marry her. So therefore, she's called eishis or vich. Eishis doesn't mean it's, she could be the wife of your father. She's a woman who has relevance to marriage, not to your father. But if she's a shiksa or she's shifcha she has no relevance to marriage to any Jew. Okay? Maz'ad 
Shivka Kananis Havali Lerabos. Hear this? No. Maybe we should include the Shivka Kananis or the Shiksa. Why? The Magairali the day. Nami Tavshi Bekedushim. If she's a Shik, what happens? She converts. Your father could marry her. Sister, under no no circumstance could he marry her. So maybe I should exclude the sister and include the Shiksa. Because the Shiksa has greater relevance to marriage even directly to your father. If she should convert. Lechim Magairo. You know something? Lechim Gairo Gufa Achrini. If she converts, that's a different being. That's a different individual. It's not even the same person any longer. And we're, we're excluding the person. Rabbona and Lamut Sanat Gemara asks. And now, so we, according to Rabbi Yosef Revuda, if you have relations with a sister, whether she's from a, a marriage, not a marriage, it's only one love. And what do you use this for? To tell me that if you have relations, and what does it come to exclude? Aishas? It comes to exclude if she's a sister from a goy. Or from Shivcha Kananis. Although it's your father's biological, it's your biological child, but it's not your sister. But according to the Chachom, that you say you get, you're, you're liable for two chatos. How do we know what excludes? How do we know that a sister from a Shiksa or from a, a Shivcha Kananis is not a sister? Maybe it is a sister. Right? That's the first question. Rabon Lamute Shivcha Vodis Chachom and Novu. Nafkale says, you know, first of the Shivcha we know because it says, that if a man is a, a, Jewish, a Jewish slave and the master gives him a shivcha kananas, a maidservant, to bear children, says, after six years, the Jewish, Jewish slave goes out free and says, the woman and her children belong to the master. But if they're the children of the Jewish slave, why do they belong to the master? So that we see clearly that children of a, shiv, of a shivcha kananas are not recognized as the children of the Jew. So therefore, if he has a child from a shiksa, from a shivcha kananis, it's not recognized as his daughter. Right? Just as a Jewish slave, he was given a, a maidservant, a kananite maidservant. What happens after six years? He goes free. What happens to the children? They remain with, they're the slaves of the, they're the chattel of the master. So similarly, so if a Jew has relations with a shivcha kananis, although it's his daughter biologically, but who, who is she? What's her classification? She's the chattel of the master. So Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yehuda, so good. Rabbi Yosef, Chad B'Shiv, Chad B'Shiv, Chad B'Shiv, Chad B'Shiv, You know, one Pesach tells me the Shiv HaKanaz, because the Shiv HaKanaz is a little bit Jewish, right? She's, she's Chad B'Mitzvah. Uh, she's, what do you need? But why do you ask me the Shiv HaKanaz? Mishum Nein Lo Chayis. If I only have the Pesach of a Shiv HaKanaz, there's no pedigree. A, goi, a, a Shiv HaKanaz is a chattel. It's like an animal. Avov is called Gis Lo Chayis. Emo Lo. Maybe over there. It is considered your daughter. A shiksa has no relevance to mitzvahs. She, she's obligated to keep all the mitzvahs of a woman. A shivcha kananis. So she's a semi, semi Jew. So if she's semi Jew, maybe the child you have from her is considered your daughter. So I need a post to exclude. No, nevertheless, she's not your daughter. So tricho. So therefore, Rabbi Yosef Yudu says, I need two psukim. Rabona Ashkan Shifcha of Edesko Chom and Olisa Shifcha have a posse. How do we know a child from a Shiksa is not considered your child? And therefore, if he has relations with a sister from a Shif, from a Goy, it's not his sister. See, it's interesting, Shaila. Um, a Jew has relations with a Shiksa, has a child. And he has a, a kosher Jewish child. Now, that daughter by law, converts to be a Jew. The brother could marry that woman because they're not related. Because that, that, no, before she was converted, she wasn't the son, she wasn't the daughter of, of the father. They weren't siblings. She was, she was, she was born from a non-Jewish woman, right? So now when she'll convert, who is she? She has no relevance to his father. She's, she's, she's a Gioris. So the brother can marry his biological sister in that case, Right? He says, so how do we, the Rabona, how do we, it's not a, it's nothing. It's a half sister, half the sister, half sister, correct. But he came and said, now the question is, how do we know the Shiksa is not a sister? Shivcha Kananis, according to the Chachom, I have a Pasuk. The Pasuk is from, we have from Shivcha Kananis, by Ebed Ivri. But how do we know it's called, no, he came and nailed me Shivcha. Maybe I should learn it from the Shivcha, just the Shivcha, the sister is not called your sister here also, No. Hanach mitzvah. We just we made differentiation because we said that a, a, a shiksa has chayis has pedigree. A shivcha kananis has no pedigree. So because since she has pedigree, maybe she's recognized as what? As your sister. 
So Amr Rabbi Yochan Mishum Rabbi Shimi Choy, very simple. This posting is Gemara Kedushin later. Amr Rabbi Yochan Mishum Rabbi Shimi Choy, Omar Kro, it says, it says, why? It says, you're not permitted to allow your daughter to marry a Goy. Why? Because it says, Ki Yosef Bintcho Amniachrai. Right? Because if you allow your daughter to marry a Goy, the father who's a Goy will take your child away from me. He'll turn him into, into a pagan. Bintcho Yisrael is Kori Bintcho. So what's the inference of this? You're not permitted to give your daughter to a guy in marriage because he will take your, my, your son away from me. That's what Hashem says. So the inference is, but if it's, let's say, a, ma- a Jewish man marrying a shiksa, he's not taking your son away from you. He's not called your son. When does he call your son if the mother's Jewish? But the inference is, but if the mother's not Jewish, the mother's a shiksa, that's not your son. If it's a son from a Jewish woman, that's called your son. It's a goy. So if it's a goy, it has no relevance, it doesn't identify with the father, so therefore it's not a sister. That's how I know that if a man has a child from a shiksa, although it's his biological daughter, the son, if he has relations with him, with her, it's not, he's not violating the law of marrying, a, of having a relation with a sister. Omar Rabino. So Rabino says, Shmamino, we're able to draw from this. Ben bitcho habomin of kochovim. That your grandson, I mean, who comes from a sheik, from, from your daughter, a goy has relations with your daughter, chas v'sholem. Kari bintcho, he's called, you, he called your son. Lamech sover Rabino. So seemingly, it's called your son, a bona fide son, not even illegitimate. So evidently, it seems to be because it's a question later. That if a, which, which the way we rule, if a Jew, ma- if a goy marries a Jewish woman, has a relation with a Jewish woman, there's a child. The child's not a mamzer. He's not an illegitimate child, right? He's a full, a full Jewish child. He's right. He's no, because we're saying it, it, the Torah calls him bincha. Bincha, the connotation is your full-fledged son. Right? So if he's a full-fledged son, it seems to be he's a kosher Jew. That means you can marry any other Jew. There's no problem about marrying another Jew. Jewish, yeah. Right? Because the Torah calls, that's called bincho. That is your son. It says to the grandfather, when your daughter, God forbid, has a child from a non-Jew, that's called your son. Your son means it adapts the same as you are. Just as you're a legitimate Jew, your grandson's a legitimate Jew. So the Torah says, Seems to be from Ravina, Lame Ksov Ravina, Ovid Kochov, Ever Abol Bas Yisrael, Havlat Kosher. Seems to say, say, saying that the, kids, the child is a kosher Jew. Samara so says, You know the truth. He, the Mamzer Lohave, although he may not be a Mamzer, which when he's permitted, Kosher Nama Lohave, but he's still not a kosher Jew. Yisrael Posel Mikri. He's called, he's called, he's called a, a Jew with a, with a defect. He's a defective Jew. It has no ramification. Let's see, what does that mean? Yeah, but the difference would be, let's say she would want to marry a Kohen. Let's say it's a granddaughter. And she, a daughter is born. She couldn't marry a, a Kohen. Because he has, she has, she's defective. She's a defective woman. Although she can marry any other Jew. But uh, somebody of that special pedigree, like the Kohen, that she's not permitted... Okay? What does he say there in the footnote on that? The puzzle? What does he say? says nothing. What's puzzle? He's not valid. No, it says puzzle. You may think he's a mamzer, so he's, he, he's not kosher, but he's puzzle. 
he, there's no number on puzzle, the word puzzle. It, it brings about this Forget about it. Forget about it. Okay, so now the Gemara asks like this. But fact, where's this Pusik speaking about? If, you're not, if your daughter should marry, the reason why your daughter is not permitted to marry um, a goy, that he'll t- take your son away from you, your grandson away from you. What does that speak about? It's speaking Shiva, Shiva Abimim, the seven nations of the Canaan. So maybe over there, because they're what? They're devout pagans. That's why the Torah says your child's not your child. Right? But maybe by an ordinary goy, an ordinary goy, maybe yes. So an ordi- if a Jew has a relation with an ordinary shiksa and has a child, maybe it is called your child. Right? So that's the more ask a question. Zamar asks, Hi, Bishiva Amimim, Umasksiv. This post was written by the seven nations of Canaan. So Mara answers, Kiyos the Rabbis Kolam Asir. No, it says, because they will take your child away from you. So what's child? That's any goy. Any goy is an idolater. So Mara Zhani, Chal the Reb Shimin, the Dorsh Taimi the Kor, according to Reb Shimin, that what? That he uh, that he's Dorsh Taimi the Kor means without the Pusuk saying that I understand it. So therefore, Kiyos comes to include other nations. El Rabbonon Menolek, but according to Chum who say, unless the Pusuk says it, it's limited to the Pusuk. So maybe it's only the Shiva Amimim, but maybe if it's other nations other than the seven nations of Canaan, maybe the daughter, your granddaughter from where, where the woman is a Shiksa, maybe it is called your, gra- your daughter. Who's the one who argues Reb Yosef Reb before? Who says that you're a violation of two? Reb Shimini. So it comes out very good. According to, it's I was like Reb Shimon, so therefore... That's how I know that a, a, a granddaughter, who's a granddaughter, a sister from a sheik, from a shiksa, is not yours. That's going to grip Shimon. Right? So it's good. For for new Mishnah, we're on Chav Gimel and Beis. Ready? Wasn't so difficult, was it? Okay. It's very simple. Uh, God forbid a child's born from a goy, a Jew, not Jewish woman. He's a full fledged goy. Full fledged. He's no different than Obama. Okay, except for the color. Maybe other, other things. It's a goy, a goy from A to Z. Right? And if it's from a, a Jewish woman, a Jewish, the child's Jewish. And the child's, the child's not a mamza. Not a mamza. America, and it's, it's only relevance if it's a girl. If it's a girl, but it's a boy, it has no relevance. Well, that's posher. That's posher. That's understood. The father's not a Kohen. It's understood. If the f- right, what what determines pedigree? The father. So if the father's a guy, he has a, has relations with a Jewish woman. Uh, what's even the consideration he should be able to be true? It's not even a consideration. Well, she can't have, she, she, even if she's Moscow, she can't be true. Because she's violated, she becomes a Zona. If a Goy has relations with a Jewish woman, even if she's a Moscow, she can't be true. Because she, she's been defiled. Let's say you have a, a, a girl goes to college. Her daughter, her father was a Goyen. And now she has a relationship with a Goyen in college. So, and we live in the time of the Beis Amigdash. She can't eat Shuma. Because the moment she has relations with a Goyen, she's defiled. A defiled woman is not permitted to eat Shuma. So I'm saying, so if this person, this woman has relations with a Goyen, she, she had a child from the Goyen. So definitely she's defiled. Right? So there's not even consideration. What the son should eat? Why should the son eat Shuma? Son's not, his father's not a Kohen. The only consideration, she should be able to eat Shuma. But she's already, she's gone. She's defiled. It's unrelated whether she has the child or doesn't have the child. Okay? No, 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 no. Right. Possible. He's, he's a defective. He's defective. Misha Kiddush Achas Mishte Achios. Hear this? A man marries one of two sisters. Then you day is a man Kiddush. So what is it? He's not permitted to either of them. Right? Because each one may be the sister of his wife. Right? You have two identical twins. 
two sisters. He marries one of them. After he's not sure which one he gave the ring to. Right? Veda is a Mekidush. So what does he have to do? He's not permitted to be with either, either of them. So no see get lezev, get lezev. It's a suffix. He has to give a get to each one of them. You follow? Yeah. Right. Very simple. Yeah. So if you're a rabbi, that's, your, that's the ruling. No see get lezev, get lezev. What about mess? What about he dies now? Oh, now it comes in. No, so now both of them, now one, his wife falls to Yibu. But we don't know which your wife is. Is it Sister A or Sister B, right? Mes, below Ach, Echod, he only has one sister. Cholet, Lishtein. So the survivor brother has to give Cholet to either one. Why? Because, because it's a suffix. We're not sure which is the Yavama. Right? This is easy. How, uh, Norman, this is easy compared to what we have until now. Right? I took gave you a cake. He, identical twins. He's not sure which is the woman he married. So they're not believed. They're not believed. They're not believed. They're not believed. In any case, a woman's not believed. You need witnesses. He's not sure which is the wife. She says, he says, I, yeah, could, could you prove you're the one I married? Cause she can't prove it. So how was he supposed to believe her? Right? So if he dies, one, and one brother gives her, what about if the two brothers? So one... Both of them could actually marry them. Because it's like two brothers marry two sisters. One will perform Yibum. Each, whichever one cohabits, there's a suffix, which one did the Yibum? Right? Good? Right? Mes v'loach cholitz l'shtei. Hoi lo shtei shnaim. Echot cholitz v'echot miyabim. Hear this? The first one has to give cholitz. One gives cholitz, one gives Yibum. Why does one give cholitz? Seemingly, they both could eat. The question is here, but why can't they both do Yibum? Let the first one do Yibum. Right? Let the first one do Yibum. The answer is no, the first one can't do Yibum. No, no, it's not here because. No, no, no. No, the, no, because it's, it will be achos kukosa because the first one was originally bound him. Even though it's difficult, it's difficult. What happens? A, 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 a woman falls to yibum to two brothers. One does so. They, either of them could have done yibum. One does yibum. Now, after one does yibum, one brother wants to go marry another sister. Can he? Can marry another sister. Marry the sister of, of that. So why is that different? He's only married to one of the sisters. So we say Monav Shach. If the first brother did Yibum, so the second one is like marrying the other sister. And if the first one married the other sister, right? So then the other, the answer is the first one can't marry the other sister. Because if the first one does Yibum, you know what happens? It's at the time he does, he marries her. She, the other one's connected to him now. That's the problem. That's what the first one has to give Chalitza. You got it. No, no. Which means. Two, one, two sisters fall to two, two. One, you have two sisters. What we don't know. Now, when the man dies, he has two brothers. He has Reuven and Shimon. Let's say Reuven would want to do Yibum with one of them. Let's say does Yibum on the one which, not, which is not the Yavama. He doesn't. But let's say theoretically, it turns out she's not the Yavama. So he's actually do, he's he's, mar he's marrying. He's having relations with the sister of the one who's still bound to him. Because the other one's still bound, because the other one wasn't released yet. That, that, that's a problem. Right, exactly. So therefore, what we do is, the first one gives the release, gives the chalitza. So if she's the Yavama, she's cut loose. So when the second one marries the other one, even if she's not the Yavama, he can marry the sister, because she's not connected. And if she is the Yavama, okay, then, then he's doing the Mitzvah Yibum. But the first one has to give chalitza. Right? Right. That's not possible. Okay. Shnaim shekitshu shte achios. Hear this? Now we have a new case. Two brothers marry two sisters. Zeniyo de eza It's more complicated. They marry, so neither are permitted to them, right? Nobody's sure which is his wife. Two brothers marry two twins, and no one knows which is the one, right? So, each one has to give two gitten. 
Reuven has to give a get to A and B. Right? Because it's not sure if Letzi gets to get to the wrong woman. Correct? See, she's not divorced. Neither could live with her, either of them. What about Nu? Mesu? No, they both died. Reuven and Shimon married two sisters. They're not sure which one married what. Wait a second. They died. We'll talk about how many brothers are left. Okay. Right? Mesu. Lezeach or Lezeach. Wait a second. The two people who died, they're not related necessarily. The two married, the two sisters, right. are, not, are not related. Right. Right. Now they both die. Now each, of the, after the, each one has a brother. So what, what do we do now? Right? Lezeach, zecholitz lishteim, zecholitz lishteim. Right? Each one gets chalitz to the boats. Like each one had to give a get to both. Lezeach, echod. One second. Lezeach, shnaim. What about one, one person had two bro one brother and one had two brothers? He had a story. Hayochet cholitz shnaim. The one brother has to give chalitz to both. Right? He has no choice. Hashnayim, but once he gets chalitz to both, now that cut loose. So now the, the two that are left, the first will give chalitza. Wait, hashnayim ha'echad cholitz v'echum miyabing. Finished. It's, it's 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 exact same. It's a replication of the first case. The other case, because they, they both can't do yibum because the first one who who marries her, it may not be the yavama. So and the other Yavama is attached to him. It's Achos Kukoso. It's the sister of the one who's bound to him through Yibum. So the first brother gives Chalitza. So if she's the Yavama, she's gone. And if she's not the Yavama, so the other one he, 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 he can marry. No, correct. Right, 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 correct. Correct, correct, correct. Hayo Cholitz Ishteim Vashnei Ishnayim Echot Cholitz Vechem Niabi. Kodmu v'konsu. What about if they went and they married them? He didn't give chalitza. Both of them did did yibum. Both they had mar right. Emotzino okay. miyodam. Then you let them both keep the why because the halacha of achus kos is rabbinical. It's only rabbinical on a Torah level. It's it's she's not the wife, the sister of you're not marrying the, the sister of your wife. It's only because it has a semblance of that. Rabbinically, we said we don't want you to marry her. So the kosher children. It's like rabbinical. No, no, no. Once they marry, we let them stay. Right. So what's preferable? One gives chalitza, the other one does yibum. But if they both married, you let it be. You let it be. Okay. Kadmu v'kintu emotzim yodam. We're not finished. Another case. Lezesh naim lezesh naim. What about two people, unrelated, married, two sisters, and no, no one sure who he married, which is his wife. They both die. Each of them has two brothers. Each of them has two brothers. Okay, well. L'zeshnaim, l'zeshnaim. Ochiv shel zeh cholet lo achas, v'och shel zeh cholet achas. Nothing changed. Right? Both brothers give, give chalitza. Okay? Och shel zeh cholet lachas, v'och shel achas cholet lachas. One would say, now, the other, we're talking about, one of Reuven's brothers gives chalitza, one of Shimon's brothers gives chalitza. One second. Och shel zeh miyabim, chalutza shel zeh. Now, now, the other one's brother could, could do yibum on the one who he gave chalitza to. V'ochiv shel zeh, miyam chalotza shel zeh. No, 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 yeah, there were two brothers. The same story happened, but except one, not one left one brother and one left two brothers. One, each of them left two brothers. Okay, so we say... And the sisters, they're two sisters, these two people. The, but the bro they're unrelated, the, the, the two people the two people who married, but now each one leaves two sets of brothers. So we say, brother A, Ruvain has two brothers. So we say, one of Ruvain's brothers gives chalitza to one, one of Shimon's brothers gives chalitza to the other. Okay? So now, now the question is, 
Maybe he didn't give chalitza to the right one. Maybe he did. So now the surviving brother could do yibum on one, and the other one could do yibum on the other. Because one of shoch. Wait a second, wait a second. Then we say, Och shel zem yam chalotza shel zem. Och shel zem yam chalotza shel zem. Och shel zem yam chalotza shel zem. Not so simple. This case is not so simple. You know something? We'll leave this for tomorrow. Okay?